Hello, this is Professor Marsh, and this is the homework review video for Chapter 4. Uh, so, uh, in Chapter 4, uh, I assigned exercise set A, questions 1, 2, 5, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Uh, so, get out your homework uh, as you submitted it, and uh, compare your answers to mine, and we'll see... Uh, 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 how they compare, and, and let me know if you think you're right and I'm wrong. But uh, uh, <clears throat> for exercise uh, uh, number one, let's see if we can get that. Uh, here we go. Well, we've got uh, Little Things Manufacturer's Toys. For each item listed, identify whether it is a product cost, a period cost, or not an expense. Uh, so for A, we had Internet Provider Service. And I have that as a period cost. Uh, for B, material expense, I've got that as product cost. Uh, C, <coughs> raw materials inventory. Now, uh, I think several people put that that was a product cost, but actually raw materials inventory uh, is not an expense. It's uh, an asset uh, uh, cate category. It's part of uh, inventory that goes on the balance sheet uh, as an asset. Uh, D, uh, production equipment rental. Uh, I have that as, uh, you know, both a, uh, a period cost, uh, but also a product cost that uh, goes into overhead, manufacturing overhead, and should be absorbed in the cost of the product. Uh, but it also could be looked at as a period cost too, because rental's typically paid uh, by the month. So uh, I didn't mark either of those wrong. Uh, showroom rental, <coughs> uh, E, that's a period cost. That has to do with sales, not with uh, manufacturing. Uh, F, factory employee salary, uh, that's a product cost. Uh, that's part of direct labor or perhaps manufacturing overhead. And G, human resource director salary is a classic uh, period cost. So uh, G is, is a period cost. Okay, that was question number one. Uh, pretty good. Now, for question number two, <clears throat> we have this whole big uh, uh, chart uh, that we're supposed to fill in. And uh, what you'll see when I post uh, my uh, suggested answers, you'll see that I did a chart here. I listed each of the items over here. Uh, in the first one, I, you know, you know, answered whether or not it was manufacturing or sales and administration. Um, if it's manufacturing, is it direct labor, direct materials, or overhead? And then if it's overhead, is it indirect materials, indirect labor, or other? And just took it across. So you ask this question first, If you, depending on if, you, if it's uh, uh, manufacturing, then you go to the next question. And then uh, if it's overhead, you go to the next question. So you can see for the carbon fiberglass, uh, that was uh, manufacturing, uh, it's direct materials, and so you don't answer the third one. Uh, on the uh, second question, which is the administrative building rent, uh, that's, I call it SGNA, which is sales, general, and administrative, and, uh, or you can just say sales and administration, and so you don't have to go to the next question about manufacturing because it's not manufacturing and so on and so forth down the uh, down the page. So uh, that's my take on it. I will post this where you can take a look at that sheet in more detail uh, along with the other answers that I suggest, but that's my take on question number two. Okay, question five. <coughs> Sterling's records show the work and process inventory had a beginning balance of 4,000 and an ending balance of 3,000. How much direct labor was incurred if the records also show materials used 1,500, overhead applied 500, and cost of good manufacturer? So uh, this, uh, you know, this was an equation where you had to kind of fill in the blanks. And I know I did this in class, but for those of you who may have missed uh, the class, uh, I went back uh, to learning objective uh, 4.3, uh, found the equation uh, for determining the manufacturing costs incurred 
and then taking out uh, the ending work in process inventory and getting the cost of goods manufactured. And so that's, uh, uh, that's, that was uh, <coughs> the equation. And so what I did is I filled in the variables that I had and what I had was I had cost of good manufactured, I had ending work in process inventory, I had beginning work in process inventory, I had materials used, uh, which I just abbreviated as DM, uh, and I had overhead applied of 500, I abbreviated that OH, and I had to solve for direct labor. So I worked my way backwards. I started with the 7,500 I had and the 3,000 that I had and that gave me, when I went backwards up the equation and added the two of these together, it means that the manufacturing cost incurred had to be $10,500. And then if this was $10,500, then if I subtracted overhead direct materials and beginning work in process, I would get direct labor and that's what $4,500 is. So that was the result of that subtraction and that's the answer to the problem. It's just finding the correct equation and filling in <coughs> the variables that you know to solve for the ones that you don't. <coughs> Let's move on to number seven. So uh, this was an exercise uh, in uh, dividing uh, $750,000 uh, by different potential uh, types of over overhead metrics, uh, different uh, uh, different indep possible independent allocation bases. And this is probably the best example that we see in the entire chapter of the idea that uh, as a managerial accountant, uh, you're going to have to choose between possible ways uh, to allocate overhead. And so our choices are A, budgeted direct labor hours, budgeted direct labor expense or estimated machine hours. And so it was really, it was just three different exercises in division, uh, which you can see that I did right here. So uh, 750,000 in estimated overhead divided by 60,000 budgeted direct labor hours is an overhead allocation of $12.50 per direct labor uh, hour. 750,000 in estimated overhead divided by uh, 1.5 million in budgeted direct labor expense gives you an overhead allocation of 50 cents per direct labor expense. And then if we use the estimated machine hours of 100,000, we get an answer of $7.50 per machine hour as our overhead allocation. Uh, and <coughs> Hopefully we choose the one that best allocates uh, all the overhead without going over. So uh, that's, uh, uh, that's what we'll uh, look at uh, as we go through uh, the rest of the semester. Okay, on to uh, number nine. And on number nine, <coughs> there is uh, a, uh, <coughs> you look at uh, figure 4.15 and figure 4.16. Uh, there's a, a chart in section 4.3 and in section 4.4 there's a green equation uh, and <clears throat> the answers here, uh, the, uh, the balance in work in process is 2,608 uh, and <clears throat> the uh, reason is because uh, job 20 uh, remains in production and job 10 uh, is completed. So job 10 got sent to finish goods inventory and job 20 uh, is the only job uh, remaining in uh, work in process inventory. So the balance in work in process inventory is 2608. The balance in uh, finished goods <laughs> inventory is 2400 at least until job number 10 sells, in which case it, it'll jump on over to cost of goods sold. Uh, <clears throat> and if manufacturing overhead is applied on the basis of direct labor hours, what is the predetermined overhead rate? And if you do the subtract, I'm um, sorry, the division 
<coughs> you're going to get uh, uh, twenty one dollars per direct labor hour uh, for you know, the dividing the direct labor. Uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, anyhow, that's that. So. Uh, uh, Oh, and I'm sorry, I didn't do the math right on that. Uh, uh, my uh, suggested answer sheet is actually incorrect. Uh, that was, I was still, still using the direct labor cost. Uh, the, uh, actually it's going to be, uh, what is that? Uh, direct manufacturing overhead is applied on the basis of direct labor hours. Uh, and so you've got 75 hours. It looks like you've got 80 cents uh, per uh, direct labor hour as you're uh, overhead allocation. Let me let me just take a second and check that and make sure that's correct. So let me get my calculator out. Uh, I'm going to take 113. Uh, no, wait, I'm not going to do that. Mm, clear, clear. I'm going to take $90 applied uh, divided by 113. And that gives me basically 80 cents uh, per <coughs> uh, direct labor hour. You have to round it a little bit, uh, you know, three uh, three one hundredths of a dollar and uh, that's uh, <coughs> that's our uh, that's our overhead allocation rate so it's actually it's 80 cents uh, per direct labor hour and uh, look at that I made a mistake so 80 cents per direct labor hour okay that's our overhead allocation rate uh, so if you were in class, uh, uh, I wish you had pointed out that I made a mistake on that. <coughs> okay, let's look at number 10. So uh, number 10 is uh, K Company Production was working on job one and job two during the month. Uh-oh, it looks like we're going to have to allocate among two jobs. Uh, of the 780 in direct materials, 325 in materials was requested for job one. Uh, so uh, how much was requested uh, for job two? I guess it was 405. <coughs> uh, direct labor cost, including payroll taxes, are $23 per hour. And employees worked 18 hours on job one and 29 hours on job two. So we now have our direct materials and our direct labor costs uh, by doing the multiplication. Uh, and let's see about overhead. <coughs> overhead is applied at the rate of $20 <coughs> per direct labor hour. So now we have our overhead allocation and <coughs> the job order cost sheets uh, for job number one. We've got direct materials of 375, direct labor, 414 and overhead of 360 for a total cost of 1149 and for direct uh, job number two we have direct materials of 405 direct labor of 667 and overhead of 580 for a total cost of 1652 which you can see right there so that's the uh, uh, suggested answers for question number 10. Okay, uh, I don't think we'll do all of these. Let's do through number 13. That gets us through all of the learning objectives. So uh, uh, in uh, question 11, uh, question 11, we've got uh, uh, a company has the following transactions. During the week, uh, they purchased $1,000 in raw materials inventory. They assigned $500 of raw material to job five. Payroll for 20 hours with $1,000 assigned to uh, job five. Uh, and I'm assuming that uh, that's uh, uh, 20 hours times $50 per hour. Uh, overhead uh, applied at the rate of $10 per hour, which is the reason I have to make that assumption about direct labor. And then uh, also factory utility bills of $750. So. Uh, uh, we've got uh, those <coughs> uh, transactions. What is the cost assigned to job five uh, at the end of the week? And so uh, we've got uh, uh, the factory utility bills uh, go into 
uh, manufacturing overhead, so we don't have to look at those separately because we already have our overhead application. So the trick was to know to ignore $750 for factory utility bills because they're already part of what's being applied in that $10 charge per hour. So uh, job cost sheet is uh, pretty simple. You've got direct materials of 500. You've got direct labor 20 times 50 for 1,000. You've got overhead 20 times 10 for 200. That gives you total cost of $1,700 at the end of the week. Okay, question number 12. Uh, during the month, uh, job uh, AB2 used specialized uh, machinery, specialized machinery for 450 hours and incurred $500 in utilities on account, uh, $300 in factory depreciation expense, and $100 in property tax on the factory. So you've got uh, uh, your overhead <coughs> uh, manufacturing overhead costs and so prepare the journal entries uh, for that. So the first general entry, journal entry is just to record uh, manufacturing overhead as an asset uh, and to show uh, the offsetting credit uh, to uh, uh, utilities payable, accumulated depreciation and taxes payable as uh, section 4.7 uh, in your chapter taught you to do. So the summary of that for manufacturing overhead is 900 bucks and uh, uh, that's a proper journal entry uh, including the description, which is to apply overhead to job A, B, 2. So uh, that's uh, what they told us. Uh, that's the example that we had in the book, and so that's the correct answer. Okay. So we recorded uh, the expenses, and uh, uh, we what we did when we took it out and applied it to the job is we took it out of manufacturing overhead to 675, and uh, put it into work and process inventory. And that's uh, that's applying the overhead to project to job AB2. So we recorded the overhead expenses and we then applied them to the job. And that's the answer to number 12. Okay, number 13 uh, is we're uh, going further down uh, through the project. And so uh, uh, job 113 uh, was completed at a cost of $5,000. Job 85 was completed at a cost of $3,000 and sold on account for $4,500. So prepare the journal entries uh, uh, for the following. So uh, uh, for 13A, uh, uh, we have uh, an entry to uh, completion of the job, we take it out of uh, work and process inventory and we put it in finished goods inventory. So our debit is to finish goods inventory. We're increasing the asset. We're taking it out of work and process inventory. Uh, debits equal credits. And that's to record the completion of job number 113. Uh, I didn't record the completion of job 85. Uh, it would have been similar. Uh, but uh, I did re record the uh, uh, sale of it. So uh, uh, in, uh, in sale, the sale of uh, job 85, uh, we've got, uh, uh, we're taking it out of finished goods inventory uh, at cost of 3000 and putting it into cost of goods sold, which is now our expense account. So it's coming out of the asset account. It's becoming an expense because we sold it. Uh, and then uh, we're recording the revenue. Uh, we're recording sales revenue of 4,500. The debit entry goes to accounts receivable because we sold it on account. Uh, and uh, that's to record the sale of job number 85. So anyhow, job 85 had had an entry for completion. For completion, it would have looked the same uh, with 3,500. I'm sorry, with 3,000. Uh, as the number that's coming out of work in process and going into uh, finished goods. Okay, so that's uh, that's all the homework I think we need to go through for uh, chapter uh, four and uh, hope that you uh, got uh, these uh, 
<coughs> principles and these calculations uh, ingrained uh, in your in your head uh, as so we can go on to chapter five. So uh, uh, do your best uh, to uh, uh, go back through your homework and see uh, where you might have made mistakes uh, or perhaps that uh, your understanding of the material was confirmed. Uh, but just, uh, you know, practice, practice, practice. It's like anything else in life. Uh, you practice it till it becomes a habit of doing it correctly. And uh, we'll see you in Chapter 5. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Uh,